I love Riverdale. I love Riverdale. I love Riverdale. Riverdale! <laughs> okay, so let's just go back to Archie Comics and everything, right? So um, my sister read Archie Comics growing up. I didn't pay attention to it. My cousin UJ told me to check out um, Riverdale when it first aired and I didn't think anything of it. I'm like, okay, sure, maybe I'll check it out later down the line. I started to pick up Riverdale when I finished the first season of The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. It has the same writers and they're saying they're gonna have crossovers. So it, it prompted me to be like, okay, let's, let's finally go check out Riverdale, okay? I love it. I love everything that is stupid and crazy about this show, right? And that also brings me why I'm making this video. I saw like on YouTube all these other people saying like, oh, Riverdale is so stupid, it has such bad writing, it has bad acting, it's so like cringeworthy, it is so cheesy and everything. Yeah! Yeah, it is! And that's why it is so great! Like, none of it makes sense. None of it! And the show knows it! And it's like, in the third season, Archie goes to juvenile detention, he goes into a fight club, escape, Shawshank Redemption style, in a sewer. Uh, none of this makes sense. Veronica Lodge, she is supposed to be 17. All these characters, all these teenagers are supposed to be 17. They're played by actors who are 20. Yeah, cool, whatever. That's typical of Hollywood. But in the show, she's 17. She has a speakeasy. She owns a speakeasy underneath a diner in some small town in Rochester, New York, nearby. And what? <laughs> what is going on? You have a gang called the Southside Serpents. They deal drugs that are called um, Fizzle Rocks and, and um, Jingle Jangle. Jingle Jangle! What is going on in this show? Like, none of this makes sense and, and I just love it! So, before I go into some of the YouTube response, um, taking some jabs at Riverdale, I'm gonna say some three highlights of why I love Riverdale up here up until the third season. Um, so one, um, being Catholic, um, Veronica Lodge is also Catholic and she has a confirmation scene, right? And it's nothing that is normal, but she sings Bittersweet Symphony like this is Cruel Intentions. Like, <laughs> it's like, what is, again, what is going on? It, like, who, like, who is writing this? It's like, it's, it's so like, on point, like, it's like on the nose, right? Like, this is, it's poking fun at everything that was teen anything in the 90s. I'll take you down the only road that I've ever been down. No change, I can't change, I can't change, I can't change, but I'm here in Let's go with number two. So in the third season, episode four, um, it is the best. Like you had all the teenage kids play their parents and it's just another Cole Sprouse playing Cole Sprouse as his dad, younger dad. And it's like, it's great because they did cosplay and everything and it, it was, it was, a, it's really great. I'll go with you. Freddie Andrews. Why? You're not even on our team. No, but the baseball team got me in the street last year and they got me some serious crap with the ladies, so. Where I'm fast enough and all they'll see is a blur. We were invincible, or at least we thought we were. That little stunt landed FP and Fred in hot water. Welcome. To Saturday detention. 
gathered in that classroom, we were strangers more than friends, and none of us could have guessed that our lives were about to change forever. Um, my third thing of this series that I find too hilarious is that, um, so Cheryl, um, the, the token lesbian in, in the show, I guess, sh she has her girlfriend, Topaz. Her girlfriend, her, her nickname for her girlfriend is Titi. <laughs> in Tagalog, me being Filipino, Titi means penis. So, you have a lesbian who likes, instead of saying the D, she likes the Titi. A lesbian who likes the Titi. What? <laughs> it, like, I, like, this is like, I can't handle this. This is so great. She says, a, there's a scene where she says, my Titi has fallen. <laughs> and all I hear is her Titi fell out. Like, oh my gosh. Now that I collected myself, I am going to go ahead and answer other people's critiques on Riverdale. Now, one of the most popular shows uh, on TV at the moment is Riverdale, uh, which is centered around a bunch of uh, sophomore high school students. So they would be around the ages of uh, 15 to 16. Yeah, 15 to 16, so. I'll give it up to Emily for pointing that out, like I said earlier. You have these 20-year-olds playing these teenagers, but that's nothing new from 90210 to Gossip, Gossip Girl and to the CW, right? And so you just play, you have these, you just find hot actors. Um, but one thing that is cool is that you have Asian and Pacific Islanders playing on Riverdale. KJ Apa, half Polynesian. Charles Mountain, Asian. So give it up for Riverdale for having some Asian representation on it. Friends don't kiss each other's boyfriends. Oh, for goodness sake, Bob. That's because the Gargoyle King looks Joe had and me to be together. Wait, the Gargoyle King? Is she still trapped in the Upside Down? Yeah, we're gonna be a ship. We're going to be a ship. Hopefully it's the Titanic. <laughs> okay, so to Jack's credit, um, it's hard to just jump into these scenes and not knowing the context. And again, Gargoyle, Gargoyle King is something in the third season that was introduced about gargoyles and griffins, a playoff of Dungeons and Dragons, and it's some supernatural thing that they introduce. And so yeah, um, it's off the bat, it's something weird if you don't know anything about the show. So, yeah. Mother Almighty, she's I wish you would stop singing. Did you reblock the scene? Why isn't she on her knees singing? Oh, did she die? Dying! Somebody should help her! For God's sakes, help her! Close the curtains, dog! Oh my god, is that the end? Wow, that was a good cliffhanger, dog. Now I kind of want to watch the next episode. I won't. If so we have Trin, um, again, dissecting these non-context um, videos. And so, I guess, to her point that she is attracted to the show because she wants to know a little bit more. But, I just, one thing that I want to point out, like, Riverdale is almost in setting of Game of Thrones in the sense that there are people who die like in every season and it's like there's a, the, the body count goes up each and every more every season so um, to that credit hey you might want to check it out and actually watch it because you might like it uh, you know I gotta mention it the writing now obviously I have to start out with the um, iconic scene by uh, the one and only Mr. Jughead. I still can't handle or process that that is his name, Jughead. Mr. Jughead Jones going on a rant about how, um, how weird and quirky he is. And I just can't, um, it's just the funniest thing to me. It's so funny, but the thing is, is I, don't, I don't think it was meant to be funny. If you had a notice, I'm weird. I'm a weirdo. I don't fit in. I don't want to fit in. Have you not seen me with the stupid hat on? It's weird. One of the biggest criticisms thrown at the show was the character of Jughead. People found him pretentious, weird, and completely unnatural. 
He was always edgy, he was always moody, he was always whining about something, and that's not really his character in the comic books to what I understand, and I get that fans were sort of annoyed about that. But I think the showrunners really embraced that criticism and changed the character for the better come this episode. In this brief 13 second clip, we see that Jughead is somewhat aware of his sheer memory. The writers, they got the joke. They get that the audience finds Jughead pretentious and hysterical. Before so, I'm That Robbie puts out a video essay of why the Riverdale is great. Um, talk, he talks about the schlock that's in Riverdale and that's what makes Riverdale really awesome. So I encourage you guys to check that out, as well as all the videos that I'll put down in the description so that you guys can check out their channel and see what they got to say about Riverdale. So, yeah. So, overall, I love Riverdale, as you can probably tell. And for three reasons, you know, um, the music, it's over the top, and the fashion. So, really, hold on. So, again, I love Riverdale enough that I bought myself a Jughead beanie. And most likely, I'll probably do another photo shoot on my other channel. It's mandatory fun with, like, a lookbook on Riverdale. Because, you know, it, they're very fashionable, and I love getting ideas from them. So again, Riverdale, super awesome. I love the music. I love how it's over the top and everything. And yeah, definitely something that you might want to check out. Give it a chance if you do think it's cringeworthy. So again, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. I also have another channel at It's Mandatory Fun, and you can follow my personal Instagram at Hey Mitch Mitch. Again, I do more YouTube and short movie TV reviews on there. And yeah. Check it out and see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.